Today's Afterthoughts are looking at our message from this past Sunday about the resurrection of the body, our hope for beyond this life as based on the teachings that Paul wrote to the Corinthians in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. And I told you that I might not be able to cover every question, but that you could share some questions. And the questions that you shared are those that I've actually heard before. There are things that tend to weigh on our minds. So I'll try to address a few of those. First of all, let me just remind you of the few things we talked about. We talked about the fact that there are several options in terms of thinking about the potential of life beyond this life. One of the simplest is the idea of lasting influence. Even someone who does not believe in the afterlife might accept the fact that in a way our influence lives forever even though our bodies don't live forever and we know that's true um, there are people who still influence us through their writings through their discoveries through their inventions um, for all kind of ways and so um, in a way you would think about the fact that someone let's just pick somebody like george washington who was the father of our country and who um, led in such a powerful way and shared behind some of his thinkings here in Virginia. We think about so many of the founding fathers and mothers who were so influential. Good old Thomas Jefferson right there among them and we still read from them and still learn from them. So in a, so way, in a way it's like they are still here with a lasting influence. Hear me very carefully here. As Christians we do believe in lasting influence. That's a great thing. The people who wrote the Bible still influence us. But that is not really the main thing we're talking about when we talk about life beyond this life. It's more like a bonus. Well, here's another one that is definitely not part of Christianity, but is a part of some philosophies in world religions, and that is reincarnation. Won't spend much time on that because it's quite a bit alien to us, but it's one way of thinking about everlasting life, and that is that you go through life, but your body is just sort of like a rented house, you might say, it's not really you and the invisible you lives in this body until it wears out, then you get a new one. Maybe you come back as somebody else and it's sort of like an endless cycle, one life after another. Some people even believe you can come back as other animals. So we won't say any more about that, but that is one way of thinking about life beyond this life. The third one is what we might call the truth or the teaching that the soul is immortal. Now this is exactly what a lot of the Greek people and the Corinthians, of course, then believed. It was not the Jewish point of view, but it was the Greek point of view. And that is that the body and the soul are two different things. Again, the body is sort of like a dwelling for your true self, which is invisible. And when you die, the body and the soul are finally separated. So the body has worn out, but the soul then goes on and lives forever in a more spiritual existence there. There are a lot of Christians who actually kind of think this way, but it's really important to realize this is not the core teaching of our historic Christian church. The basic teaching of Christianity is not the separation of body and soul, but the unity of body and soul that our body is not just a worthless shell, but it is indeed a grand gift of God, and that our lives unite together the physical and the spiritual. Material things matter in our Jewish Christian point of view. And so our hope then is not just that some part of ourself will be separated from our body when we die, but as we say in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And the Bible teaches that happens on the day of Christ's return, that he shall come again to judge the quick and the dead, which means the living and the dead, and that the dead in Christ will rise to eternal life there. Judgment Day comes, and it's the separation of the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the chaff, the righteous from the unrighteous, those who will live forever from those who will not have life in Christ. There is a separation that takes place according to our traditional teaching then. So what then is the resurrection of the body? That is our ultimate new life where we receive what's called a perfect or spiritual body that is powerful and glorious that will not wear out like this one. Okay, what are some of the questions that we hear often that, and that you shared in response to this particular teaching? One of the big ones is, will we know each other? Some people sometimes hear some implications that even though we get a new body, we won't be able to recognize each other. And that caused them, them a lot of grief because indeed one of our hopes for the next life is to that grand reunion with those that we've been separated from. 
there's probably more than one way of viewing on this, but let me tell you, I have always thought for sure that we would indeed know each other, that that is part of our hope, that we will be together. That's something we read in 1 Thessalonians, that we will be caught up, those who are alive, along with those who have gone before, will all be together with the Lord. And that togetherness only makes sense if we know each other. Now, the truth is we probably won't look exactly the same. Some of us have that as an actual hope there. You know, I'm going to be so good looking, some of you may not recognize me at first. It's going to take a little while there. So that's part of my Christian hope, to be honest there. Um, I'm going to get something a little better than I've had to put up with this in, in this life. We get a little bit of a cue maybe from both the transfiguration and the Easter resurrection story of Jesus. In both of those cases, Jesus' appearance was transformed. He was not exactly the same. And yet ultimately, with eyes of faith, the disciples were able to recognize him. And so I believe that even though we have new perfected bodies that may be as different in the next life as an acorn is from an oak tree or a seed is from a plant. Nevertheless, um, we, we will be perfect and we will understand each other and we will know each other. Now here's a tough question. Some have asked, will we be married in heaven? Our Mormon friends believe that your marriage is going to be continuing on in the next life as well. But for us Christians to answer that question, we simply need to turn to the words of Jesus himself. We find that in the 12th chapter of Mark. You might want to go back and read that entire discussion. But the verse that answers it very clearly is Mark 12, 25. Jesus was being asked a question about a woman who had had seven different husbands. She had been a widow seven times, and then she finally dies. And those who really didn't believe in the resurrection were trying to trap Jesus and say, well, how is she going to have seven husbands? Or which one's going to be the first, the last one, or the best one, or whatever? And then this is how Jesus answered the question. She will not have any of those as her husbands in heaven. Mark 12, 25 says, when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. In this respect, they will be like the angels in heaven. Notice it does not say we will be angels. Angels are spiritual being, but in the terms of not having the same kind of family life structures in heaven as we do on earth. Now, some people take that as kind of a sad thing. Maybe someone who's had two very happy marriages would take that as a good thing to know that they're not going to have to pick between two rivals there. In this respect, we simply have to trust God that, and realize that if you had a joyful marriage, just multiply that joy times a million, and that's the kind of joy we're going to experience in the next life. We just simply have to trust God that he's going to do it the right way for, in such a way that we will be blessed. And then one last question that I hear a whole lot is, what about that in-between time? You see, one of the comforting things about the immortality idea is that when you die, your soul gets set free to be, to be with God. But then the idea of the traditional Christian teaching is the resurrection of the body, that there's going to be a day in the future when all rise and are judged, the righteous to eternal life, whether you're alive or dead at the time that Christ calls you to him. Now, um... In one sense, that's really wonderful because the idea is that we're all going to be together with Jesus at the same time there. So it's truly a grand reunion. But some people get a little disturbed because they sort of think about, well, that that could be a long time off. That's a whole lot of time to wait. Or think about the Christians that lived in the century immediately after Jesus. Um, they really believed that Jesus was going to come any time. And Paul assured them, well, it really doesn't matter if you're alive or dead at the time of Jesus' return. He's going to receive you. But they thought that was going to happen any day now. But imagine now it's been like over 1900 years and Christ has not yet returned. I mean, are they just like sitting in a room, twiddling their thumbs, waiting for Jesus to get with it? That sounds like a, a boring thing, even if you are set free from death. What does that all mean? Honestly, I don't have a perfect, simple answer on this one, so you're just going to have to bear with me on this when I say, you know, um, this may be one of those questions that we answer in terms of thinking about the difference between our time and God's time. God says in, in the scriptures that, the, that God's timing is like a thousand years can be like a day, and a day can be like a thousand years. And so we simply have to trust that, that the Lord is not going to abandon us. And 
Have you ever heard R.I.P. Rest in Peace? That um, as we await the day of the resurrection of the body, we are going to be in peace, in peace with the Lord. And so in that sense, there is the truth that though our bodies may be decaying, our soul will be in the hands of the eternal God and he will take us to himself until that day that we receive the new heavens, the new earth, and the new body there forever hope that helps a little bit. These are tough questions and ultimately, remember those other words from Corinthians, now we see in a mirror dimly, but one day we shall see face to face. We don't understand it all perfectly now, but the truth is we do understand enough. So hold on to what you do understand and know that God can be trusted, not only for this life, but in the life to come. Hope this helps.